want to be parallel to the wave, all right? Because you want to watch it. There's a sweet spot just at the end of this white water. Paddle, paddle, paddle. This is Montreal! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, on your toes, on your toes! <laughs> It's multicultural, but yet it's kind of like a mix between what the best Paris has to offer and the best Brooklyn has to offer. This is my first time in Montreal. Definitely won't be my last. Welcome to Montreal. A multi-layered city where every shade of green, stroke of paint, and wave of adventure turns Montreal moments into lasting memories. My journey begins in what has recently become one of Montreal's hippest neighborhoods, Mile X. Where old Montreal gives you that Parisian vibe, Mile X evokes an entirely different feeling. And here to break it all down is local guide and all-around cool guy, Danny. If you had to describe Mile X in three words. I'd say uh, young creative and rough around the edges. I said Mile X, not describe yourself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is sort of an industrial neighborhood that's going through a little bit of a renaissance. It's sort of become the new hip and in destination in, in Montreal. Have you ever been to New York? Definitely, yeah. This almost reminds me of Williamsburg. Yeah, it's gritty. It's not always pretty, but it's authentic. Did you grow up in this neighborhood? I was south of here, and I now live north of here. And actually, this place gets its name from where we had a home when we were younger, which is the Mile End and where I live now, which is Park X, so it's like an in-between the two, Mile End and Park X, they call it the Mile X. Spanning less than one square mile, Mile X is a hub of artists surrounded by canvases at every turn. Now this is an interesting piece. Yeah, this is a work of art that was introduced when uh, they renovated this building. It's by What Is Adam. He's a local Montreal street artist. He does a lot of sort of Canadiana. Canadiana. Yeah, is that so similar to Americana? You got it. Symbolic, Montreal iconic. It's actually associated to an amazing street art gallery here in, uh, in Montreal. Is there a rather large street art scene? In the Milex here, we're starting to see more of it, but we do have a massive street art festival. It's the biggest one in North America every year. There's up to 100 works of art. A mix of local and whatever's hot in the scene internationally it gets in invited to Montreal's festival. So it's basically. international. It's huge. This is like a cool little hidden garden here, huh? Uh, this is one of the 360 green alleyways that we have in Montreal. And you're finding more and more of them now in the neighborhood. Basically, it's a project where the neighbors get together to embellish and beautify the space. They get funding from the borough, and then it's really up to the neighbors to maintain the project. And this is just another example of how progressive Mile X as a neighborhood is. Cheers. Sante. Mm. Wow. It's good. That is a good brew. We were lacking a cool beer bar in this part of town. So there are these women who are in a very male-dominated industry, but since their opening have been winning awards for their different styles of beers that they showcase at the different beer festivals around the province. It seems like a lot of the entrepreneurs in Mile X are young. Definitely. I think for the whole city, uh, that's something that is very true, is we're a youthful city. We've got four big universities, and it is the young creative type that are creating these cool new niche businesses. Listen, this is a delicious beer. Glad you like it. The service is great, the beer is great. I could use better company, but other than that, I'm I was about to say day. the same thing. I love you, Danny. All this walking, all this talking, I'm a little bit famished. So, we're picking up some grub and meeting a few friends at weekly Montreal festival, Tam Tams, in the heart of Mount Royal Park. Montreal's a city of festivals. We have more than 100 a year, right? Wow, so it sounds like Montreal is a party city. It right? is. And people can... enjoy it. <laughs> people have a party, time. but also focus on culture and art and to yeah. make that accessible to all Montrealers and people who visit. 
This almost like has like a Central Park vibe, you know? Like a central gathering place for all the various neighborhoods. It really is the heart of the city. You get up through the woods and, and you forget that you're in a city of four million people. And then you get up to the top and you have this amazing view of all of downtown. And after traveling around Montreal, I've noticed that there are so many unique little areas. Montreal's not that spread out, you know? It's a very much of a walkable city. You can walk from downtown to Plateau to Old Montreal, and then from Plateau to Milan. It's like a nice mix between European culture and flair and North American creativity. You can't make a banana? No. Come on, yeah, you can. Uh, So Mount Royal in the summertime, obviously people are out here, they're doing outdoor activities, playing frisbee, that sort of thing. In the wintertime, you can do cross-country skiing in here. It's really cool to be on a public bus to see somebody with a bunch of skis yeah. on them. And that's super Montreal. You have to come back in winter, for real. I will. À toi, Montréal. To you, Montreal. À toi, Montréal. Yay! <laughs> It is a hot day in Montreal. We're soaking up the sun and exploring the city that introduced bike sharing to North America is best done on two wheels. But today, I'm looking to get on board a different trend. And filling me in on the latest wave of excitement to hit this urban oasis is surf instructor Alex. Santé. Santé, Johnny. Man, what an amazing place right here. It is. This used to be a place where you could shape your own boards. When I think of surfing, Canada and, and Montreal especially doesn't really strike me. Because we're not close to the ocean at all, so we're surrounded by a river. We're river surfing out here and people just are getting to know more about it. I think there could be 15,000 surfers around here that come every summer. Wow. Yeah. In an ocean, you're dependent on the weather and wind and that sort of thing to create waves. That's the cool thing about river surfing. The wave is always there. It's an endless wave. You could sleep on this wave. Sleep on the wave? You could. Have you done that? Not yet. I've heard you were from California. You've probably been surfing, right? I surf the internet all the time, man. Listen, we actually had a surf class in high school. I got hit by about four waves. Once my feet hit the sand after that, I remember telling myself, I'm hanging up my boards, man. You know what? Today my job will be to make you comfortable, make you enjoy surfing, and when you come back in California, you have to surf again. Okay. <laughs> To what, Griffintown? And we're heading to Griffintown. But then we're gonna turn around and go west to uh, La Salle, where the surf is. St. Lawrence River. St. Lawrence. It's a really wide river and it spreads out in the ocean. Here I was thinking all you guys did was play hockey. So there she is. The St. Lawrence River, where it culminates into Lachine Rapids. That's it. They look beautiful, man. I'll tell you, when I envision Montreal, this is not exactly what I pictured. It looks like a washing machine. Yeah, pretty much. There's a lot of stuff going on in there too. There's massive sturgeons, longer than you. There's fish in there bigger than me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. How long is the St. Lawrence River? It starts from the ocean, you know, and it goes straight into Niagara Falls. So from Toronto to uh, Nova Scotia. And how many surf spots are there along the way? I would say there's a lot of surf spots out there, but the main ones is gonna be the bunny waves. The bunny wave. We have a name in French for it, Vague à Guy, Guise wave. So we're gonna change the name from Guise wave to Bananas wave. Bananas wave? Yeah. Let's do this, brother. Surf's up. Banana bro. The way you normally surf is you come up from over the wave. This one, you're actually going into the wave. That's it. There's a sweet spot where you want to get the wave. Yep. It's just at the end of this white water. It's the part of the way that will hold you the best. That's the beauty of river surfing. If you surf this wave, you'll surf any wave. So I'll go first now, I'll call you. Ready? Paddle, paddle, paddle. Yeah, there you go. Watch the bubble, you want to be right next to the bubble. Oh! Flat on the board. This is Montreal! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, on your toes, on your toes! What a rush! He said it himself. Awesome, dude. That was sick. You nailed it. Man, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, what a workout. Woo. I'm like burnt. When I couldn't even figure out a way to stay in the wave, I was like, this is not happening. Wipe out! 
the sounds, the feeling, the sights. I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, just look around. I mean, this is such a beautiful landscape. I never knew until today that you could surf inside a river. I'm ready for the next wave. Yeah, it's just a normal day in Montreal. You got some room on your couch I can come crash or what? Come over. Done. Yeah. We'll be out here every day. Go, man. Ladies and gentlemen, just when you thought you knew Montreal, you ain't seen nothing yet. First Look is sponsored in part by Tourism Montreal. To plan your Montreal stay, visit mtl.org. What separates an ordinary city from a premier destination is definitely the food. Putting a city with more restaurants than you could count, over a hundred ethnic groups influencing the menus, and an abundance of fresh ingredients at your fingertips in a class all its own. What a beautiful market. So this is Jean Talon Market. It's the biggest market here in Montreal. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the biggest outdoor market in North America. Is a lot of this produce like locally sourced? Most of it is. And then obviously stuff that doesn't grow here, like peaches from Ontario and stuff like that, you'll find that all around here. Personally, what I know about Montreal's food scene is limited to the one dish most people associate with the region, poutine. So today, I'm getting a long overdue lesson in what makes Montreal a foodie's paradise from some of the city's foremost authorities, beginning with Chef Hakim of Restaurant Provisions. These are my favorite corn guys. Bonjour. 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 C'est bon, hein? C'est bon. C'est bon. And he says you guys have the best corn in, in town. In Quebec. In Quebec. What is it that inspires you on a day-to-day -day basis to pick up certain types of produce? It might be that I come here and I see something that pops at me and we'll change the menu that day. It opens up like a hug and it finishes like a warm embrace. So what do we got here? So here you got some watermelons. Pick one that feels heavy for its size. Because if you see like a, a brown spot, it means it was sitting on the ground. So it had more time to ripen up. As they say, a little dirt don't hurt. So. You're a very deep man. Wow. Did you put sugar on this or this is how sweet it actually is? You know why it's like that? Because you touched it. You better believe it. He's just eating it. It's going to be me that's going to wind up cooking all this. So provisions, it's you and a partner, right? Yeah, so it's my partner, Pablo, where you're going to meet tonight. OK. It's a blind menu. You don't really know what you're eating. You'll tell us if there's something you don't like, and then we choose. We're preparing a big dinner Yeah. for some pretty heavy hitters in the culinary community, right? Yep. You nervous at all? No. The menu at Provisions is built for sharing, and our family this evening includes a few of Montreal's most renowned chefs and restaurateurs. Pablo, this is your establishment. Yeah, so I'm a chef and a co-owner with uh, Akim, my partner. In the business that we are right now, we can't afford to just be chef anymore. We have so many good restaurants ar around us. These guys are my buddy, but like everyone's a pretty good cook. But also it's impossible to please everybody. Like we all have a different style. And I think this is what makes the beauty of Montreal of like, I will go to your restaurant and we'll taste your cuisine, your cuisine, your cuisine. Vegetarian is at the heart of Chef Stephanie's restaurant love. We all have different cuisine and we all do it very well. While Chef Stefano is Montreal's godfather of Italian cuisine. We have uh, Impasto, Pizzeria Gemma, and we have Chez Tuzignan, which is our snack bar. But you guys also respect each other because you're all facing the same challenges. Absolutely. Yeah. As for Chef Char Antoine, his menu at Montreal Plaza is not so easily defined. It's a bit like eating like in a Russian circus with like women that have beard, but in the NASA at the same time, you know, because it's very precise. So, so, so coming to your restaurant plaza is like going to dinner with a Russian woman with a beard? Exactly. I'm coming to your restaurant. Whoo! Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> How would you describe Montreal cuisine? Is, is there one way to describe it? I don't think there should be one way. No. I mean, that's what makes Montreal so great, is that it's so different. You want some broccoli? Yes, please. I'm hitting the meat. Montreal just happens to be this melting pot and the synergy of all these different cultures, be it Portuguese, Chinese, Italian, Indian, and you can always find one spot that's gonna make it like stellar. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? Is there something that's unique about these restaurants being in Montreal? Everything's still accessible. In Montreal, you can build a restaurant, yeah. buy a building, you can like build yourself a future like, from nothing. And it's very true what he said, like me and Akim, we opened a restaurant with barely anything, where we're like, 
there's no waiter, cook's gonna be serving, and there's no menu. You sit down, you tell me what you don't eat, what you don't like, and I'll make it happen. Cool. Anywhere else, like that's not a business plan. No. Obviously, you're gonna be way more passionate and way yep. more, you know, outspoken about your own restaurant if you're the one that owns it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Montreal is famous for this, of like, it's an experience, I'm coming to your house, to your door, to your establishment, and you're gonna give the customer as much as you can give him because you want that thing to work. Yep. You want him to come back, yeah. you know? Yeah. So basically, bang for your buck, Montreal is definitely the place, right? Because you can get everything at a good price, different food, different wine. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, it, and that's why we love it. It's a very affordable city. And we like, we like to share. I think people totally. in Montreal, we're, we're, generous. Like, we're very, very generous. This is an absolutely special place, and I couldn't have discovered it Please with, be with back. better people. I will. Cheers. You really take all the white <laughs> white stuff for yourself? I'm a heavy pour, man. <laughs> I got a strong pour, and now you just took it all. But yeah, it's called taxes. Welcome to Quebec. Hey, 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 hey. Here's to Montreal, man. Here's to Montreal. I forgot my wallet. I hope you guys don't mind. Accommodation provided by Fairmont the Queen Elizabeth in Montreal, Canada. As night falls, the city lights up, bringing to life another side of Montreal overflowing with options. Vive Montreal! Hope you drive me home tonight. Cheers. Cheers and salute. Hey. <laughs> In addition to the amazing food scene, there's also an incredible nightlife. Nightlife, yeah. Crazy. Disco, classic. There is everything in Montreal. And people going out like super lit. But no matter where the evening takes you, you're gonna have the night of your life. Gay Village should be on the agenda with none other than Montreal's queen of the night. Mado, c'est moi. The legend of Montreal. The queen. The queen. Of course. In a career spanning 31 years. I started, I was one year old. Wow. Yeah, I know I still look 31. You still do. Mado has been holding court in one of Montreal's most visited neighborhoods for nearly half that. Well, we just celebrated our 16 years anniversary. Sweet 16. Well, congratulations. We're in the heart of Gay Village right now. Would you consider your establishment the centerpiece of Gay Village? Maybe it became the centerpiece because I attract all kind of crowd. There's gay people who come here, but there's a lot of heterosexual that comes here. There's young people, older people. It's not a gay village anymore. It's a village. People come here not only for the bars, they come just to walk on the street. The entire village is pedestrian from the 1st of May till the end of September. They come for the art exhibition. And we have like all those balls hanging out from the mm -hmm. sky. And the and rainbow, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's Just steps away from Mado, you're transported to the Caribbean with Agricole, a Haitian bar and restaurant backed by a couple of Montreal's hottest acts. Here we want to create like Caribbean scene and the African, it's like that vibe. You have like the music, you have the food, you have the good Caribbean cocktail. When you leave Agricole, you have I say, what? Yeah. I have a night. Yeah, it's not just about the food, it's not just about the drinks. Wow, what is in that? <laughs> it's also about creating like that atmosphere and the ambiance. Doesn't Agricol have some roots in music as well? Yes. The owners from Arcade Fire? Win, Win? and Regine Chassain. Regine parents are Haitian, okay. and they want to show like the real, the authentic, the authentic, the authentic yeah. Haitian, Haitian returns. Because in Montreal, we are a big community, about like 100,000 Haitians. And I mean, they got the best chef in Haiti here cooking, cooking food, man. <laughs> so I mean, they're doing something right. Montreal is probably the best kept secret. After like 400 years, we kept our culture, our tradition. We have our own kind of food, we have our kind of joie de vivre. We talk to everyone on the street, we like people. When you're in Montreal, you don't feel you are in it and did not. I feel like I'm in Europe. If you want to travel around the world, you stay in Montreal and you can feel like you're in another city right away. And I thought coming here, Montreal was always cold, but I will say, it ain't cold in here. It's hot. It it's is, hot, it is, it, Of course it's hot. Ooh la 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 la
Hold up. If you think that's a wrap on Montreal, you're sadly mistaken because no visit would be complete without diving into this epic indulgence. This is classic poutine. A glistening plate of fries topped with cheese curds and brown gravy. But at Poutine Hotspot La Banquise, classic is just one of 30 eye-popping variations on the menu. And the best part? They're open 24-7. Oh my God. This is heaven in a bowl. I mean, that's pretty good. Wow. Now this is living. You want to know why people in Montreal are so happy? It's not the weather. It's not the beautiful city they live in. It's the poutine. I feel like I could die a happy man now. <laughs>